it's time for mass with Mr. Thomas. And then there's the dorks and the ones with the brains the size of a half of mint. Chapter 9, lesson number 3, related rates of change 2. This time we're moving on to look at implicitly defined rates. So, a lot of the time if you encounter one of these problems, you may also have an implicitly defined function. Grace, do you remember what is meant by that? Yeah, you are perfectly right. Our function, the equation that we get, is not going to be of the form y equals something in terms of x, or x equals something in terms of y. You can see here that you've got x's and y's on the same side. So with this example one, given that x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared, when x and y are functions of t, and dx by dt equals 6, calculate dy by dt at the point 8, 6. So, the same as the last lesson, what I would do with this is to reread the question and start writing down everything that you know, write down everything that you're told. So the first thing we're told is that x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. You can see that just there. x and y are functions of t and dx by dt equals 6. So if you differentiate x with respect to t, you get 6. We are wanting to calculate dy by dt, so that's what we want. So just now we've just got a question mark, we don't know what it is. And we're also told this point 8, 6. So in other words, when x equals 8, y equals 6. What we need to do now with this then, is we need to start differentiating. And we differentiate our function with respect to t, because it says that x and y are functions of t. So differentiating them both with respect to t, we're starting off with x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. To do that, well, you just, just differentiate it the way you normally would. So if you differentiate x squared, you would get 2x. But because you're differentiating with respect to t, you also add in dx by dt, because we're differentiating x with respect to t. Then we would have a plus and the same thing again. You would differentiate this just the way you normally would. Imagine if you differentiate something squared. Well, you know the 2 comes down. You take 1 off the power, so it would go to 2y. But because we're differentiating y with respect to t, you also bring in dy by dt. You got it. And if you differentiate 10 squared, well, that is just a number, so that will go to 0. Where do we go from there? Well, we know that dx by dt equals 6. So let's sub that in. Let's replace dx by dt with 6. So that's 2x times 6 plus 2y dy by dt equals 0. After that, well, the next obvious stage, rather than writing 2 times 6, you could write that as 12x. So you've got 12x plus 2y dy by dt equals 0. Above this pink line is just the question from the last page. After that, really, we're wanting to calculate dy by dt. So we need dy by dt equals. So let's subtract 12x from both sides. Then let's divide both sides by 2y. After that, you could simplify here because 12 and 2 would divide, so you would get 6. So we end up with negative 6x over y. What do you think we do after that? Simone, help us out. Brilliant. From there, we are told to calculate dy by dt at the point 8, 6. So because we know this point, we know x is 8 when y equals 6. So we can replace x with 8 and y with 6. And that will give us dun, 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 negative 8 as our answer. So dy by dt equals negative 8. Example 2. A point moves on the curve 2x squared take away y squared equals 2, so that the y coordinate increases at the constant rate of 12 meters per second. Part A. At what rate is the x coordinate changing at the point 3, 4? And part B. What is the slope of the curve at point 3, 4? So the first thing we do, again, what I like is to just write down everything that I am told, write down everything we know from the question. So we are told the equation 2x squared take away y squared equals 2. We are also told that the y coordinate increases at a constant rate of 12 meters per second. Because it's per second, that's going to be the rate, you know, it's going to be the rate of change of y. So it's dy by dt, and that equals 12. We are asked for part A, what is the rate? At what rate is the x coordinate changing? So at what rate is the x coordinate changing will be dx by dt. And that equals question mark, because that's what we want to find. And you know the point is 3, 4. 
So where do we go from here? Well, because it's an implicitly defined function, you start by differentiating with respect to t. So differentiating with respect to t, what do we get? Well, your 2x squared, if you differentiate that the way you normally would, well, you bring the power down, you take one off, so you get 4x. But because we're differentiating x with respect to t, you have to bring in dx by dt. Because you're differentiating y squared, bring that down, so it goes to 2y, you've obviously got that minus as well, but you have to bring in dy by dt. How do you know it's dt? Well, because it tells you it's in meters per second. It's the rate. Rates are going to be re with respect to time. So you'd have dy by dt. And that would equal, well, if you differentiate 2, it just goes to 0. After that, we know dy by dt is 12, so we can replace that with 12. So it's 4x dx by dt. Take away 2y times 12 equals 0. 2y times 12 will give you the 24y, so that's what we're taking away from the 4x dx by dt, and it still equals 0. Remember, we want to find dx by dt, so let's rearrange this by adding 24y to both sides. So 4x dx by dt equals 24y, and that means then if you divide both sides by 4x, so divide the 24y by 4x, you would end up getting 6y over x. After that, we know the point is 3, 4. So when x equals 3, y equals 4. Therefore, dx by dt would equal 6 times 4 over 3. And that's going to give us 8 meters per second for our answer. Yeah. Part B. Well, after that, what we've then got to do is work out the slope of the curve at the point 3, 4. How would you go about doing that? Does anybody have any ideas? Caitlin, what are you thinking? Perfect. You're perfectly right. Yes. The slope is really the gradient. And the gradient is found by working out that first derivative, the dy by dx. And if you remember back in chapter 2, lesson 13 with parametric differentiation, what is dy by dx equal to? dy by dx equals dy by dt by dx by dt. Yo. That means then dy by dt, you can see that here, that's equal to 12. dx by dt, we just worked that out, that is 8. Which means then that dy by dx, dy by dt, by dx by dt, is 12 over 8. Simplify that and we get 3 over 2, or 1.5 for our answer. So that will be the gradient of the curve at that point. Woo! Example 3, given that x squared, take away 5xy, take away 3y squared equals 7, and dx by dt equals 1, calculate dy by dt at the point to negative 3. Once again, I like to answer these questions by writing down everything that I know. So right away, you are told that equation, so I'm writing that down. I'm also told dx by dt equals 1, and I want to work out dy by dt, so that's unknown just now, and I know the point to negative 3. A lot of the time, these questions are a lot more worded than that, so it definitely helps to pull out the information that you have. After that, because you have an implicitly defined function, you want to start off by differentiating with respect to t. So differentiating with respect to t, I'm just going to put brackets around that 5xy just now, because differentiating the x squared is easy enough. Differentiating this, take away 3y squared, easy enough. But it's the 5xy that causes problems. Why does that cause problems? Well, because you've got a product of two functions. It's the 5x times y. So in order to differentiate that, you have to use the product rule. Woo so if you have the product of two functions, let's say u and v, dy by dx would be u dash v plus u v dash, which means then you're going to have to write down u and v and differentiate. So because we've got 5xy, we've got 5x times y, let's make u equal to 5x and let's make v equal to y. If we differentiate 5x, well, that's just going to go to 5, but what else do we need? dx by dt. Brilliant. You're differentiating x with respect to t, so you're bringing in dx by dt. So that is what u dash will be. For v dash, if you differentiate y, well, you're differentiating with respect to t, so that will go to 1 dy by dt. Woohoo! After that, you can differentiate this. 
differentiate your x squared, that'll go to 2x. But remember, you're differentiating x with respect to t, so dx by dt. Then you're taking away, and then in the brackets here, I'm just going to write down this u dash v plus u v dash. So u dash times v is the 5 dx dy times y. Just put the 5xy first. After that, I'm going to be adding on the 5x times 1 dy by dt. In other words, 5x dy by dt. And then I'm going to be taking away and differentiate 3y squared. Rebecca, good, 6y. And again, you're differentiating y with respect to t, so you get dy by dt, good. If you differentiate 7, well, it's just a number, it's going to go to 0. So you'd have 0 for your answer there on the end. Above the pink line, that's just the line that we came up with. But from there, I'd probably get rid of these brackets. So keep the 2x dx by dt as it is. Then I'm taking away the 5y dx by dt. I'm taking away the 5x dy by dt. And then I keep in this end part just as it is as well. Just remember, I'm wanting to find out what dy by dt is equal to. That's what the question wanted. Calculate dy by dt at the point 2, negative 3. So I need to rearrange all this to get dy by dt equals. What I would probably do is because both parts with the dy by dt are negative, I'd probably add these terms to the other side or add it to both sides. So if you add the 5x dy by dt to both sides, it moves it over to the right-hand side. If you add this as well, then you'd have it just on the right-hand side. It means you no longer have the negatives with the dy by dt. After that, take out common factor. So there's a common factor here of dx by dt, so take that out. And on the right-hand side, you've got the common factor of dy by dt, so take that out as well. After that, you want dy by dt on its own, so divide both sides by 5x plus 6y. So you'd end up with that. You'd end up with dx by dt times the 2x take away 5y, and then that's all over the 5x plus 6y. Just remember that dx by dt, we were told that was 1, and we had the point 2, negative 3. So because we've got the point 2, negative 3, we know that x is 2 when y equals negative 3, so we can sub these numbers in. So replace dx by dt with 1, replace all the x's with 2, and the y's with 3. If you do that, you end up getting, for your answer, negative 19 over 8. Example four, a 13 meter long ladder rests on horizontal ground and leans against a vertical wall. The top of the ladder is being pulled up the wall at 0.1 meters per second. How fast is the foot of the ladder approaching the wall when the foot of the ladder is five meters from the wall? Once again, for any of these questions, start writing down what you know. With the likes of this question here, what I would probably do is to draw a little picture of a ladder against a wall. And if you have that, what shape are you going to get? Triangle! Brilliant! So you're going to start off with something that looks like this. So you've got the ground, then you've got the wall, and you've got this ladder that is leaning against the wall. What we know is that the ladder is 13 metres long. So we're writing down 13 metres. The purple bit is just the ladder. So we've got 13 metres. We're asked how fast the foot of the ladder is approaching the wall when the foot of the ladder is 5 metres from the wall. So we know this distance is going to be 5 metres. We know because this is horizontal, this is your x distance, and the vertical distance is going to be y. We also know that the ladder is being pulled up the wall at a rate of 0.1 meters per second. So we know the rate of change of y dy by dt equals 0.1. What we want is how fast is the foot of the ladder approaching the wall. So it's the rate of change of x that we are wanting. So dx by dt equals, well, that's what we want. In order to do this, what you're best doing is again thinking what else could you work out. If you think back to many years ago, if you had a right angled triangle and you had your two sides, how could you work out the third side? What would you use? Pythagoras! Brilliant! You can use Pythagoras. So really, in order to work that out, you can say that really when x equals 5, well, the y squared is going to equal 13 squared take away 5 squared, which will be 169 take away 25, which is 144. Square root that, and you get 12. So you know this distance is going to be 12 when the x value will be 5. After that, where do we go? Well, we know the next thing that we're going to have to do is to find dx by dt. 
But how could we do that? We know to do that we're going to have to differentiate. But we don't have any function there to differentiate. Boom, boom, boom. So what could we do? Well, we need to come up with that function. And what we do know is that a function in terms of x and y would be, well, think again of Pythagoras, the x squared plus y squared must equal 13 squared. So that gives us a function in terms of both x and y. Again, it means it's implicit, so you can easily find dx by dt with all this information by differentiating. So differentiate x squared with respect to t, that'll give us 2x. And again, differentiating with respect to t would mean we bring in dx by dt. Plus, differentiate y squared, that'll go to 2y, but again, you're bringing in dy by dt. And if you differentiate 13 squared, well, that's a number, so differentiate it, and it will go to 0. This is what we have, just putting that over the page. Where do we go from there? Well, remember, we are wanting to find dx by dt. So the first thing to do is to rearrange and get that. What we'll probably do, first of all, though, is divide everything by 2. So take out 2 as a common factor, divide both sides by 2. Therefore, you get x dx by dt plus y dy by dt equals 0. To get dx by dt on its own, let's subtract the y dy by dt from both sides. Therefore, you can say that if you divide x, divide both sides by x, you will get dx by dt equals, and it's the negative y divided by x, and you've also got the dy by dt. Just remember the information we were given, you know dy by dt equals 0 0.1. And we also know that when x equals 5, remember we used Pythagoras, when x was 5, y was 12, that was 12 meters. So we know that when x is 5, y is 12, we know dy by dt, so we can sub all of them into this right hand side. If you do that, we end up with negative y over x is negative 12 over 5. We're multiplying that by dy by dt, which is 0 0.1. Work that out, and you end up getting negative 0 0.24 meters per second. What does that mean then? Well, that means as the ladder is being pulled up, the foot of the ladder is approaching the wall at 0 0.24 meters per second. And that there is your answer. Try the questions on related rates of change to implicitly defined rates in the Unit 2 booklet, page 59. Check your answers as you go. Best of luck. Have fun.